Most people play the new Jedi Survivor game for all the epic action and lightsaber wielding. And then there's people like me, who wander around and take screenshots of everything. Now I'm gonna take this screenshot and build a replica prop. The first thing I needed to do is create a two-dimensional graphic of the panel and all the designs with it so that I can take it to the laser cutter. Once we had all the acrylic pieces cut with the laser, I took the design into Fusion 360 where I could 3D model the Greeblies. And while it was in there, I went ahead and 3D modeled the entire panel. This way, you can go to our website at thesmugglersroom.com and download both the templates for a laser cut design as well as the STL files so you could print your own. In the description below, you'll find a link to our website and those free files. Now, speaking of 3D printing, that gives us a great opportunity to talk to you about today's sponsor, Elgu. I like finding Greeblies in the wild as much as the next guy, but being able to custom print your own designs for a specific size for your project, now that's awesome. Elgu was kind enough to send us their Mars 3 Pro, as well as their wash and cure station for us to try out on this project. The Elgu Mars 3 Pro was fantastically easy to set up. I was able to go from unboxing to printing in less than 15 minutes, and my project was fully printed within a couple of hours. The prints came out great and the wash and cure station helped me clean things and get things cured in a snap. Now, if you've watched this channel for any length of time, you know we don't do a lot of sponsored content. We're selective in that process, and we really only want to share products and services with you that we think would be valuable. Elgu checks all those boxes for us. Reliable, easy to use, great customer service. There are various printers on their website that range in different prices, and hopefully you can find one that works for you. So if you're in the market for a new resin printer, or maybe you're thinking about buying your first resin printer, follow the link in the description below, give Elgu a look, and try out one of theirs. I want to give a big thanks to Elgu for sponsoring this episode. And now, let's get this panel built. Okay, so we got this foam piece routed out, so now we've got a channel to put lighting inside. One thing I noticed after this paint and sand texture was put on here is that I lost a lot of that cool detail that I got when I was using the water and the butane. And that's kind of a bummer. I think next time I will do far less sand in the paint. Thank you. 
It's a face. Right there. It's a face. Yeah! Thanks to my friend Ron, all I see is that face. So we're gonna have to fix that at some point. Okay, I think we've got everything nice and weathered here. All the pieces and parts. In the meantime, we need to go ahead and take care of this guy and get him painted up, glued together, get some acrylic tiles, and away we go. Okay, so when we laser cut, if we wanna have pinstriping, we usually just score this area here. And then that allows us to peel that off and then we can spray that. And one thing I found is if you hit it with a little clear coat, if you spray that over this first, then it will seal all the edges of the area that you're painting white, the pinstriping. And then that doesn't let the paint bleed out. While we got the airbrush out, let's go ahead and get our Greeblies painted. Nice and clean and shiny so that we can make it all filthy and dirty. <laughs> the scored lines help us line it up you really only have one shot at it. Next step is to get our tiles in place. Shameless plug, we sell these little one inch acrylic tiles, which are kind of iconic for a lot of Star Wars projects. And what we've done with this panel is the design of these openings are one inch by one inch. The base plate underneath is slightly smaller so that we have an area in order to glue the tiles in place, allowing us to illuminate them from behind. We're gonna light up these tiles with some pre-wired LEDs. These are good from nine to 12 volts. We'll just hot glue these in place, wire them all together, good to go. This seems like the perfect project to utilize my friend Jamie's product from the outer rim. And this will fit perfect down inside the cutout niche. That'll give some automation to our cool panel here. Let's plug her in here. Let's see what kind of light we're getting. Well, that's pretty dim. When the LEDs aren't facing out, they're pretty dim. So I'm gonna have to rework this a little bit. Okay, so I'm thinking, which is obviously a dangerous thing for me. These traditional LEDs, these small guys here, they work good for little areas like these holes that you wanna line up, because you're getting the direct light. But to illuminate an entire square, we need more light. We do have these rather large LEDs, and they put out a fair amount of light. If you soldered all these individually, that'd be a fast way. But I really dig these solderless connectors. They're really kind of cool. And if you're intimidated by soldering, then these connectors might be what you need. Got Jamie's awesome outer rim lighting system, and I've removed any of the options I didn't. So basically I've got a couple of grounds left, an always on, and a very slow. So I'll be able to take all of these lights and wire them into the appropriate option that I want, and then I'll be able to install the single LEDs right here, and then hopefully we can lay this all in nice and neat. There you go, we got a little bit of glow on these and some blinking lights. Now we need to do is, uh, Let's weather this panel up a little bit so that it matches the weathering that we've done on everything else, and we'll be good to go. Now we just have one final touch. Something a little more for this project. Something that ties it all together. There. There we go. I think we did the creator's artwork justice. At least, I hope we did. And I want to give a big thank you to my friend Fitzgerald for getting me into the game. Very much appreciated, my friend. I've got several more of these to make, and then I can ship them off to all the cool artists that created the environments at Electronic Arts for this game. And if you want to see more fantastic foam to rock, 
then you're going to want to check out this episode. As for us, we'll see you the next time we build something out of nothing. Nothing.